just to recap what we covered in the last video, we said about refractive media, so the parts of the eye that let us refract light, let us bend light onto one spot. Those were the cornea, which was the first part. Then the aqueous humor, that was the liquid part, aqueous humor. Then there was the lens and the vitreous humor. So these four parts allow us to actually bend light and focus on one spot. So what you can imagine, if light were to pass through, most of the bending would happen at the cornea, right? Then some more bending will happen at the aqueous humor, a bit more at the lens, and then you're going to have your actual focal point, so that point where it's meant to hit will be hit at the end. So every single step along the way, there would have been a bit of bending, right? So cornea, you can see there's a bit of bend happening there between these two media, then the aqueous humor, a bit more bending happening there, then a bit more the lens, and a bit more at the vitreous humor. All of these four parts make sure that light is directed onto that one spot. So that's basically just a recap of the last video. But in this video, we're going to talk about something called accommodation. So it says, in the dot point says identify, which means name. Name accommodation as the focusing on objects at different distances. And also describe its achievement through the change in the curvature of the lens. We have to talk about how accommodation actually happens. And we have to explain its importance. So why is it actually important? Why is accommodation important? All right, so first of all, remember what we talked about last time in terms of light, every object emits light. So I hope that should be fair enough by now. Every object either directly or indirectly emits light. So imagine this white ball here. In this case, you only have these light rays all moving, continuously moving at speed of light, so at very fast speeds. But the ones that we care about are the ones which are going to hit our eye. So in this case, it's only going to be you know, these couple of these ones here. And they're going to be moving straight the whole time. All right, so I'm just going to I'm just going to draw them having hit our eyes. So they're going to come more or less parallel. Right? They're going to come all come quite straight towards our eye. Because these ones here, the ones that are coming at, at a curve, they don't really care. We don't care. We don't see these ones. The only ones that arrive are the ones which are coming straight at us. So the further this is a long distance. So the longer the distance, the more longer the distance, the more parallel the lines. So the more parallel lines. Whereas if we have a short distance, so if the ball is not far away but close away, what's going to happen is you can actually have light rays coming, some coming from from the top of the object, some from here, some from there. So you can see it's not all it's not all parallel. These one or two might be parallel. So these two here might be parallel. But you can have some coming from different angles. This one comes from this angle, this one from that angle. So you can have more work done. So this whole these four parts need to achieve more bending. So for the four a, a refractive media, need to do more bending to make sure they can all hit one spot. Right? It's meant to be hit, hitting one spot on the back of the eye. Here, it's pretty easy for them to just bend them all into that one spot. But if the, the object is closer, there's going to be light coming from more sources, which means more bending has to happen for that same light then to end up being on that same spot. If that makes sense. But basically what we need to know is we need to know these, even though these four um, refractive media, the cornea, aqueous humor, lens, and vitreous humor are all there, the only one that we can actually change is lens. So the lens is the only one that is sort of changeable, which means if we want to have good vision at long distance and sh at short distances, we need to be able to change the lens to let us focus things more or less depending on how far the object is away. I'll cover that more now. So basically, again, we've got two different types of um, eyesight here. We've got the lens, so that's the middle is the lens. I'm drawing in black, that's not a good idea. I can't see that. Drawing a lens, and we've got our ciliary muscle. That's here, this part here is our ciliary muscle. And this is just the iris, but that doesn't really matter for this case. But what you can see here, this you can imagine, these are all parallel. These lines are parallel. So remember, parallel lines come from distant objects, so objects which are far away. All the light rays end up being parallel. Whereas this, these are all coming from different types of sides. So this would be sort of mixed light rays, not all parallel. This would usually be from a close object, so objects which are close by. Now we want to focus on that one point, and we said that if they're all parallel, 
that's not too much of a problem. So this one will come, it will get slightly bent. This one will come, and it's more or less okay. Like it's not a massive problem. Whereas here, you can see this one will have to get bent a lot more to be able to f actually get to that point. All right, so you're going to have more light rays coming from different angles. So we have to have more refractive power. We need to be able to bend that more. And how that works is by changing the shape of the lens. So you can see here on the bottom, this lens is flat, a flat lens, or more flat than the top lens. The top one is more round. And by having a round lens, a round lens gives us more something we call refractive power. We're going to talk about that more in the next video. Refractive power. So if it's round, it's going to have more refractive power. If it's flat, it's going to have less refractive power. But refractive power means, refractive means bending, so it has more power to bend stuff. In this case, light. So um, we're going to have a rounder lens, and that allows us to have more bending happening, which ultimately will make sure that all these light rays hit that one focal point in the end. Whereas if they're all coming parallel, like in distant objects, we don't need to have so much refractive power, we don't need to have so much bending power, which means we can have a flatter lens to make sure that sl slight bending occurs, but the bending isn't too much to make sure we can still hit that same point. Right, so that's basically what we need to achieve. We need to achieve a round lens if we have closed objects, like a round lens, and we need to have a flatter lens if we have distance objects. But the only one thing you still need to kind of think about is how that's actually achieved. Because it's asking how is that so describe how that's achieved. And that's for these ciliary muscles. Remember ciliary body, some one of the things you need to know, you need to be able to label this. And the ciliary body is just the muscle, the ciliary muscle, plus this, these ligaments, these gray things that come off are the ligaments. So our ciliary body are just both the muscle and the ligaments. Now what happens here? Here, this muscle is relaxed, which means it's going to pull on this ligament. This ligament is going to be pulling towards, it's going to be stretching. So the ligament is stretching, it's going, or another word for it is tout. So when the muscle is relaxed, the ligament stretches, and when the ligament stretches, the actual lens also stretches, it becomes flat. Right? So if we want to have a flat lens, we're going to have a relaxed muscle muscle which makes these ligaments taut or stretched, which will also stretch the actual lens. Whereas here, if we want to make it round, we're going to have our ciliary muscles contracting. And you can almost imagine that to be a bit like a bicep. So if they're relaxed, it looks like this. You're going to have a flat bicep. Whereas if you are contracting, so the ciliary muscle, there's going to be a bit of a bulge coming, like a bicep, a bit of a bulge, and that bulge allows us to make a, f a rounded shape on our actual lens. So you can see here the bulge that wasn't there beforehand. That's because the ciliary muscle has contracted this bulge. And that means that this is now the, the actual ligaments themselves are a bit more sort of loose. They're hanging a bit loose. They're not, they're not as stretched anymore, which means the shape of the, of the lens is not as flat and it becomes more round. Right, so how is it achieved? We have distant vision. We have these flat-like lenses. In near vision we have these rounded lenses and the way we've achieved that is through uh, either having relaxed ciliary muscles which will stretch ligaments and give us a flat shape for our actual lens or we're gonna have contracted ciliary muscles which will mean these ligaments are a bit more loose which will give us a, a rounder shape for our lens. And yeah, Both of these are important to make sure we can have distant and near vision and we can still focus on the same point. Bending is different depending on if it's far away or, or close by. That was the second part. And last part quickly is um, talk about the importance. So explain the importance of this. And this comes um, in terms of visual acuity. Visual acuity is just how good our vision is. So how good our vision is. So acuity, and you should probably know that term, just means good vision, right? So if you have good visual acuity, you've got good vision. And now, if, for example, we have a lens which can't change the shape, so a inflexible lens, you often get that when you get a bit older. So when you age, you, your lens becomes more inflexible. 
what will often happen is you will have a blurry image. So this will be your eyesight, not as extreme in most cases, but it might become a bit more blurry, especially when you're looking at things which are close by, which are really close by, it might become a bit more blurry. And the reason why is because that lens is not working properly. Because remember, this is usually, you want to make sure that the light comes in, it gets refracted, and then it focuses on one point. And then we have proper vision. That's, that's here, this would be ideal. But this is what happens if the lens doesn't change shape. So let's say this is a, a near object. So a near object is, is a, and then what's meant to be happening is this lens is meant to become fatter in shape. So that means that the light would usually be able to all still hit the, the back of the eye. But in this case, it's not actually happening. It's not becoming uh, focused. So what that means is it's actually focusing on, the, on a different focal point, a focal point which is in front of the retina. But what that means is that the light still passes, the light still continues. The light will meet here. This is where it meets. But then the light will still continue. And we're going to find, you're going to find all of these different photoreceptors act, being activated. So not just one point at the back, but many points. And these many points is what gives us a blurring image, right? So when it comes to, if you have proper vision, it'll all hit one spot, which means we have good vision, good visual acuity, whereas if you have a problem with the lens being able to change its shape, we for example have myopia, which we'll talk about more in the future, which is nearsightedness, but what that means is that the actual, all the light rays are meeting at a different point, in this case too far in front, and that means that it, once light actually gets towards the end, it's going to spread over, spread over a whole area as opposed to one spot, and that gives us bl blurry vision. So explain the importance. We need to have it to be able to make sure we can have good visual acuity because without it, we wouldn't be able to adjust our lens properly. That means we get blurry vision and, and bad vision overall. So I'll quickly go over the one again. Identify accommodation as focusing on objects at different distances. So accommodation was just the lens being able to change the shape depending if it's far or close by, right? So far becomes flat, close by becomes round. That's accommodation. That's what accommodation is. Um, then we need to describe his achievement, and that was done for these ciliary muscles, right? So when they're relaxed, they become more flat in shape because it will mean that these ligaments are stretched. Whereas if it's um, round, that means that these ciliary muscles have contracted, and these ligaments are a bit more loose, which gives the, the lens a bit more of a round shape. So you need to know how that works, more or less. And then the last was the importance. Remember, the importance was just if we don't have these mechanisms, if we don't have accommodation, then we can't focus light that's close by onto the back of the eye. And that means you have blurry vision. You don't have good visual acuity, you've got blurry vision because that means light will spread over a, a large distance once it gets to the back of the eye, and that gives you that, that blurry vision. I hope that was useful.